context. So it all comes down to this. The context is the basically the class that configures all of robot legs for your entire app. Right? That's really all it is. Could be one simple class, could be a class that you extend, you could instantiate and call the methods manually. It's up to you. If you're building a large project and you're looking for a feature version of robot legs that actually utilizes the context as the event bus, you can create multiple contexts. Right now, I've only got one in the repo, but anyway, anyway, the goal of the uh, context is to initialize the framework, right? It's it, what it does is it wires up the mediators, right? Wires up the commands, and that's it. Oh yeah, and uh, convention is that you can dispatch ready events. So the point of that ready event is there's a lot of things going on. Tell me when you're done, right? Because Lua is a blocking language, a lot of the stuff is not asynchronous. You, you don't have to dispatch a ready event. Um, Lua is not necessarily a, an event-based language. Corona has definitely added kind of that convention of dispatching events upon it. You can call your context init method or whatever else internally that it's supposed to do and just go about your day. It's just a convention that was left over from a lot of it. It's like, all right, just tell me when you're done. Right? I want to wire up this. Someday if it is asynchronous, cool. My API doesn't change. That's why. So you don't have to do it. It's just a convention you'll see a lot of people do. So if you see it, that's why. Okay. Someday in the future, I'm going to have uh, an older build had the context that acted as the event bus. And that way you could create multiple contexts so people could create modules of robot legs frameworks, right? Or applications that weren't necessarily a build for Android, right? They were actually actual modular, modularized robot legs applications that could coexist with other robot legs applications, right? And utilizing the Lua 5.2 or the Lua 5.2 modules done in the 5.2 style in 5.1, right? You could actually create these mo multiple contexts that could coexist. It's not quite there yet. And most of the apps I've seen, I don't think would really benefit that much. Using um, the class name slash event type usually gets around name collision. So until apps get that size, it doesn't seem like a really good thing for the repo. So if you go back, if you uh, get hub commits, you can see where I switched it out to runtime. But um, you know, there's got to be a more flexible way to have both, right? There should be a way. So I'm trying to figure out the most cleanest way to make the code do that, support that, okay? The only requirements that you really have for a context are either extend context or create a context. Context internally has all the methods you need to hit listen for um, you know, views creating themselves, attach the mediators, detach the mediators and the views die, listening for global events to launch the appropriate commands that are supposed to launch and then retain them or remove them from memory in a future build, right? And as long as you keep that context around and doesn't get eaten my garbage collection, good to go, right? Or you can extend it and just create an init method. That's that's what I did. That way it's a single class, you know what it is, blah, blah, blah. it's up to you, do whatever you want. 